What up people, it's Jason here from Custom Cans. I just thought I'd give you a quick project update because I know I've started loads of projects and I haven't finished them so I'll just show you where I'm at with them because I know I've been very busy recently and haven't been able to finish them off. So we'll start with the HD660. Now I've put a lot of work into this and I, I, I don't think there's a... <laughs> it's not quite there yet. So as you may or may not know we do uh, an upgrade for the HD650 and HD600 which is just a simple weight and some bits of foam that go on the back of the driver and it gives you sort of better base response, that kind of thing. Probably one of our most popular products. But uh, a lot of people have asked if we could do the same for the 660. So I bought a pair of 660s thinking like, oh, they don't look too different, how hard could it be? But it turns out it, it is harder. If you look at the, the back of the driver here, you can see you've got a, a like a mesh over the center, over the magnet there, and we don't have direct access to the back of the magnet. So it's a bit more difficult to try and alter airflow and that kind of thing through the back of the driver and I've tried several things so I've tried similar kind of attachments that we did on the HD650 that kind of clip on the back there and um, I also noticed that Sennheiser have done some good work on this I don't know if you can see that but it's kind of rounded over here so it already kind of smooths the airflow going in the back but uh, yeah, I tried a few other ideas because I wasn't too sure which parts were important and basically pretty much no change to the frequency response whatsoever you could remove a little bit of distortion by smoothing off some of those edges but nothing that was significant enough to really bother with uh, kit wise. Yeah we also like tried restricting the airflow that kind of stuff which brought the bass down and leveled a few things out but it still wasn't quite you know that the whole point was I wanted to add a bit more sub bass so that that side of it kind of failed it's just, it's just it, it happens occasionally it turns out Sennheiser have squeezed as much goodness out of these as possible pretty much pretty much so what I then started working on was uh, an attachment that kind of goes inside and then the original pads would go on there and it would basically just give you an angled driver. Uh, you can also flatten off the kind of mid-range and base a little bit more. You can give them a little bit of retuning by attacking the, the front of the driver. So this is where I'm at, at the moment. So we've got this, this unit here and these clips on the outside attached to the original pads and then they and then this in turn it's got uh, clips on the back there that go into the driver where the pad went so that kind of clicks on this clicks on there and then you end up with angled drivers which gives you kind of bigger sound stage you definitely get a bigger sound stage uh, slight retuning but uh, it's still not quite there I've got like one or two more little tweaks that I want to make to it because uh, at the moment it, it squeezes your head a bit too much because of the extra width on there so I'm moving the pickup point for the arm over to the 3d printed part there so you'll just angle the driver rather than trying to make the whole headband get in an angle that it doesn't want to go in so a little bit more tweaking to do there I've got them printing off this is the kind of thing like as I said I've put loads of work into this probably probably 20 hours or something of testing and designing and stuff like that and I'm not really getting the results I want. I have made some improvements, but it's not quite where I want it. So, and, and also these 3D printed parts are quite complex. It's not the kind of thing that we could get machined cheaply. So once I've finalized it, I'm probably gonna uh, sell the STL files or give them away or something like that so that people can print it themselves if they've got a 3D printer, but it's probably not worth us doing here. It's a, it's a multi-part piece and it takes about 10 hours to print a pair. Uh, yeah, so it's probably not financially viable for us to make a kit, but because I've done all this work, I will be making the STL files available. Right, so that's the HD660, in case you're wondering. Um, I will get you, some, ooh, once I've got the final parts together, I'll get some measurements and you can have a look and we can see how we've changed the frequency response and reduced some of the distortion, that kind of stuff. So, um, HE400, eh, very, very popular headphone. And I found a really simple mod uh, that, that just makes them sound better. Don't know if you remember, I was working on these uh, these inserts that go in there and uh, kind of improved the airflow, that kind of stuff, which gave me a touch more sub bass and a slightly better sound. Uh, but again, very complex part <laughs> that took quite a long time to print. Not not nearly as bad as the the HD six fifty uh, HD six sixties. But yeah, quite a complex part. And then I was messing around with magnets and got some magnets, some neodymium magnets, the right size to fit on these. And I discovered that if you put one here at the front 
at the front of the driver in the right orientation. Essentially this side of the driver gets more sensitivity so it can produce more sound from the same input and because it's at the front it makes it sound a little bit more open and spacious because the sound is coming from the front where, where speakers would be. But yeah you get a nice, it sorts out the bass, you get nice flat bass just, just by putting this magnet in it just makes so much difference. The, the treble's crisper, sound staging's better, bass is better. It's the cheapest and simplest mod we've, we've ever made which is really annoying considering I put in so much work making the inserts and this is, just does a better job and sometimes that just happens. You find a simpler solution you kind of have to throw your other stuff away. So this is really simple because it doesn't doesn't need any mods or anything. We will be uh, we will probably get some of these made up the right size and be selling them on our website. Actually should we do should we do some measurements now just so you can see? That would be a good idea won't it? And there you can see we've picked up you know a couple of decibels all the way down to 10 hertz. Right. And you also get a, a little right at the top here up around what's that sort of going close to 20k. I don't know what is it? It is 16k. You get a little peak so you get just that little bit more brightness at the top. But yeah the, the, the interesting thing obviously it doesn't really show it on the graph but it does sound much wider like the sound stage is much wider the instruments are further apart that kind of stuff and for a little magnet that costs that's going to cost I don't know five five pounds a pair or something like that it's not it's, it's, a, it's a bargain it's a bargain let's just um do a measurement of the inserts which I did as well so with the with the insert that I put in we didn't so much pick up any bass because I couldn't really seem to get much more out of them but what we did do is scoop a bit more out the middle just so a bit, bit more like the Harman curve where it goes along and it scooped out and then you got a bit more at the top end which made the bass feel a little bit a little bit beefier because we had scooped out some of the middle and if we have a look at the distortion this is the stock uh, and you can see you've got quite a lot of distortion down in the the bass region in the sub bass region and then looking at the other one that's reduced uh, we've also taken out, we've sort of had a bit of distortion in the sort of mid-range as well, around 2k, which again has been removed by the insert. So I'm thinking maybe <laughs> a combination of the two. If I redesign the inserts, so you've also got the magnets, so you can pick up a bit more sub bass and you can get rid of the distortion and, and, and scoop out a bit from the middle and make it sound a bit more awesome. So maybe a combination of the two might be good, but the magnet is, is bang for your buck, really good. Just plunk that on. 10 minutes you're away cost next to nothing genuinely improves the sound makes them just makes them sound just be, just better uh, <laughs> in a lot of ways so anyway so that's the HE400 project uh, that's coming along the swanky cables uh, are now available we've got them listed on the website uh, we're only doing balanced versions at the moment just because I don't really think it's, it's entirely necessary for single-ended but I think you're gonna get the most benefit from going balanced because of the lack of crosstalk because the, the wires are so far apart but these are our new rhodium the copper uh, rhodium plated copper 4.4s with the extra wide 9 mil hole in the back those oh they took ages to get to get made but they're really nice so they got a good Good heft to them there because because obviously it's just a huge chunk of copper yeah nice nice connectors and then again we've got the, the the copper rhodium connectors on the other end so they are now just about those are ready to go they've gone through the final testing again i'll do a little video showing some of the testing that they've been through those are good to go uh any other projects coming up um yes let's talk about my knob you know how it is <laughs> so a uh, long time ago we started a project uh, building a, a cheap balanced amplifier good but cheap uh, working with a company in China or, who are already making an amplifier and then we just tweaked tweaked the design slightly just uh, like put better op amps in it and just foodled around with a couple of little just a few components just to kind of squeeze the most bang for your buck out of it because we're trying to make a decent balanced amplifier for under 100 quid but as part of it I got a bit carried away with the volume knob and you know how it is when when someone grabs your knob they, it wants to be satisfying in the grip <laughs> so uh, so this is what I've come up with so far uh, we might get these machined out of aluminium or something but obviously it's going to add a bit to the cost of the 
the thing so I'm still not 100% on it but it's really nice it just fits the hand super nicely you've got a, a little ridge here to indicate uh, where the volume is but because it's because uh, it's a ridge it's tactile you can feel it as soon as you grab hold of it you kind of know where the volume is without having to look that kind of stuff uh, it's knurled around the edge to give you a bit more bit more grip basically uh, I spent probably more time than I should have designing my own my own knob to go on there <laughs> so uh, those are still uh, unfortunately we've run out of money we've just bought too much bought loads of stock ready for Christmas and I can't afford to get these manufactured yet um so we've got to got to just sell a few more things and then uh, yeah I, I, I don't know i think it's going to cost us 10 to fifteen thousand to get the first small batch made because uh, we've got to, got to order quite a lot of, uh, and then if they sell we can we get them a bit cheaper but yeah initially we're not going to make any money and uh it's 10 or fifteen thousand pound that i haven't got so so we're not going to do that so we're going to save up for a little bit hopefully if we sell some of these cables because obviously i've invested many thousands of pounds getting these cables ready we sell some of those. We'll be um, good to go. The, the HE400 SE Stealth Magnet Super Duper Duper modified ones. They are... I'm, I'm happy with them now. They are as good as they're going to get. They've had the final little tweaks done to them. And uh, I'll be sending these off to some reviewers because I really want some honest feedback. So I've, I've contacted a couple of reviewers. I'm going to send them out and say, what do you think? I'm really happy with them. But as long as they're really happy with them, we'll put these into production. We'll start selling already modified versions of these, uh, which I'm hoping are the best. They're going to be the best sounding headphone that you can get for under 200 quid. Amp's going to be 100 quid. You know, I would have thought Amp, DAC and headphones for 500 quid is your really good budget audio file set up for 500 quid, which is, you know, it should, should outperform things that cost a lot more. So, uh, so that's, that's where we're in with all the kind of projects that are halfway, halfway through. I'm sure there's a few others that I that I haven't done. Oh yeah, I nearly forgot. Uh, we're going to Suarez Modern Art. Hopefully next week we'll do a little video there, uh, just picking up our custom painted Hi-Fi Man Sundar clothes backs, which we'll be auctioning off for charity as well. So look out for that. And obviously uh, this week we're doing the draw for the for the giveaway on the golden some of our clothes backs as well so uh yeah keep your keep your eyes peeled we've got a few things that we're just finishing off and uh and hopefully we should have some new project projects then loving your work <laughs>